Hello everyone, my name is Jasmine and we are back today for the third prompt of the 12 days of Yule challenge that was put on by Ivy the Occultist. Her link will be down below. The third prompt for the 12 days of Yule challenge is to reflect on our last year of practice. This one was something that I kind of debated on doing because I get very much in my head of how I'm going to express what it is that I'm going to express and I had been journaling about my practice constantly throughout the year but having to reflect back on it and then try to condense it and share it was a bit of a challenge for me so I'm just going to try to go off a few points and summarize it the best I can and we're just gonna go ahead and start <laughs> Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to talk about was my dragon magic. I took this entire past year to really dive deep into my dragon magic. If you are not familiar with the Working Dragon Mystic, I suggest you go check him out. He has released a dragon magic course. I have taken his Dragon Magic 101 course and completed it. If you have taken that course before, you know all of the things that you have to accomplish in order to finish it. So it is quite an accomplishment for me. And it has really cemented dragon magic in my practice. I don't see myself leaving that type of magic anytime soon. It may be something that I take with me the rest of my life because of how important it has been for my practice. It's really allowed me to work with energies and work in the astral in ways that I had never experienced before. So it is definitely something that I recommend if you're willing or wanting to try it out. The next thing I want to discuss about my practice this past year is my relationship with curanderismo. Curanderismo is something that I haven't talked a whole lot about on this channel, but I do plan on making more content about it in the future but it is a type of Mexican folk magic. It is a healing modality, not just spiritually, but also physically, emotionally, and mentally, as it is seen by people in Mexico. Now, I took it upon myself to tackle a mentorship in curanderismo in an unconventional way. A lot of the people who mentorship or do mentorships <laughs> in curanderismo usually travel to Mexico or to another teacher that's usually near the border of Mexico and they just stay with them. This mentorship was done online via Zoom so it's not your typical mentorship but I still gained so much from it. It was a year long and I completed it in November so that was another very big accomplishment for me. It really pushed me to practice in ways that I hadn't been taught, even though my parents are from Mexico. They had lost a lot of those ways. And it was also a way for me to re reconnect with one of my ancestors, one of my mighty dead, which is my great grandmother, whose altar I've shown before in this channel. And it's like somewhere over there. <laughs> she was a... Um, I actually don't know what she would consider herself, but all the things that she did would have categorized her as a curandera, which is a practitioner of curanderismo. She was a healer. She used a lot of herbal medicines and one of her main roles, and I think one of the most important roles was her being a midwife. But basically me reconnecting with my heritage, with my culture, has always been a sore spot for me because I always felt othered by my culture. So being able to even get into the whole vein of curanderismo and learn about those practices was something that I didn't see myself doing for a long time, but I took that leap and I'm so glad that I did, which leads me to my mentor, which is 
Erika Buenaflor, and she's actually authored quite a few books. I own every single one of them. Um, I have a couple right here. I'm going to pull a few just to show you. Okay, so <laughs> these are her books. As you can see, they have been read. Uh, one of them is Sacred Energies of the Sun and Moon. She talks about how to work with the sun and the moon, different times of the day, different phases of the moon. Um, but of course, all of these are through the curanderismo lens. And I don't know if I mentioned it before, but another way of looking at curanderismo is to call it Mesoamerican shamanism. However, not everybody who practices curanderismo would use that term, let alone would consider themselves a shaman. So, you know. Uh, another one is animal medicine. This one I freaking love because she talks about shape shifting in different ways and she talks about shape shifting into different animals in order to receive medicine from those animals. And then it goes into the correspondences of the medicine you can receive with those animals. So this is a really good book too. Then we have Curanderismo Soul Retrieval. So if you're somewhat familiar with shamanism, you probably heard the term soul retrieval and that's exactly what's being covered in this book. She has written Veneration Rites of Curanderismo, which was in one of my TBRs, but I have not finished reading it, which is why you have not seen a review. And then she has um, Cleansing Rites of Curanderismo, which is all about cleansing rites, but that one's in my office <laughs> on a bookshelf because I reference that over there when I'm working over there. But the reason I gravitated towards her as a mentor even though she did a very unconventional type of mentoring is because one, I have social anxiety, so that made it easier for me to participate. Two, I've taken, I before I started that mentorship, I had already participated in a handful of her workshops. So I knew kind of her vibe and the way she taught and I really gravitated towards that. Three, she's also a scholar. She was, she's got her JD, which is what you need if you're gonna be a practicing lawyer. And she also has a master's degree in Mesoamerican uh, shamanism, I believe, or Mesoamerican culture, something like that. I could literally just read the back of the book and correct myself. Hold on. Okay. She has a master's degree in religious studies with a focus on Mesoamerican shamanism. Okay, there we go. She's also been practicing curandera for 20 years. And what's most important for me is... She's not telling you that you need to believe in X, Y, and Z in order to practice this. She is not someone who gatekeeps. She is not someone who says you cannot practice this if you are not Mexican. She doesn't care if you're black, white, brown, orange, pink, or green. As long as you approach it with respect, that's all she cares about. And that was huge for me because that was one thing that kept me apart from practicing curanderismo because of the heavy Mexican folk influences with Christianity, Catholicism, because that's not my juice. That's not my vibe. So that was very important for me because part of me felt, well, I'm not going to be able to connect with my heritage, with my culture, with my roots, if I can't also embrace Catholicism and Christianity. So it kept me wanting to stay away from that side of things. And she kind of helped me find a way to do that, to reconnect, to be able to deepen my relationship with my great grandmother to deepen my relationship with my, my parents and, you know, like these old ways that were lost, even with my grandmother, because I was trying to learn more about my great grandmother. It had me have extensive conversations with my grandmother that I otherwise would not have had. And that I know a lot of her grandchildren have never had with her. So it just gave me a lot to be able to do that. And I think I've talked a lot about, curanderismo already but I have one more thing to say which is the workshops that I was also doing before and during the mentorship so Erika also hosts workshops and they all have different purposes usually during these workshops we're talking about three hour long workshops three and a half hour long workshops are pretty long she gives you the option to go in person or to participate online whatever works and they're based around curanderismo, but they have been so amazing for me. It has expanded a lot of my astral work. And that binder that you see right there is full of the worksheets from those workshops. So I completed the one year mentorship. She does have a level two. She's going to be starting in January. I'm debating whether I'm going to jump on that or not. 
just because I have a lot of things going on right now. But that right there just also exploded my magical practice. And I know it already sounds like I did a lot, but wait, there's more. <laughs> kind of going off the curanderismo, because it is a shamanistic practice, and I had already been doing shamanistic type of practices prior to curanderismo, I was already connecting with the elements. But when I went hardcore with curanderismo, which is a specific type of shamanism, it just made my connection with the elements that much more deeper. And in conjunction with the dragon magic, which is also very elemental for me, it was just like explosion. Uh, <laughs> so it's, it's funny too, because I was working with these two types of magical practices or paradigms, if you will. It really made me be able to, in real time, compare and contrast. And there was actually a lot of things that overlapped with the shamanism from the curanderismo and also the dragon magic. Like a lot of the things just kind of fell into each other and allowed me to blend them together to make something that fit me personally. And this leads me also into working with plants. I had not been working with plants as heavily as I am now. And I had not been working with plants as broadly as I am now. My connections are a lot more solidified and it's gone to the point where I am now dreaming plants and before I plants were never in my dreams before and now I'm dreaming plants I'm dreaming plants that are telling me work with me or use me to cleanse um, more specifically the way that they came in my dream was use me for limpias which is spiritual cleansings but typically these are cleansings that we do on others not so much for the self another reason why my, my uh, connection with plants has become that much more stronger is because of working with curanderismo, right? Right? <laughs> but also because I have launched a herbal business with my sister and I've been very hesitant to talk a lot about it. I have been adding in little clips and shout outs of it throughout December when I've been doing my whole like brujexmas, which is my version of vlogmas. So you can look for those videos there. My or our Etsy shop is linked down below as well. So shameless plug. We are right now just selling two different herbal teas, but we are working on releasing a salve as well as a couple of other teas and herbal products. So that definitely made me connect harder, stronger with herbs and plants because of just having to live with them on the daily and drink them and have my hands in them and communicate with them and learn about them scientifically, magically, and in all different types of ways, which leads me to my recent project that I'm taking on, which is creating my own Materia Medica. I think I'm going to stop right there and just save that for the prompt where I'm supposed to talk about where my occult practice will go from here on out, because if not, we will be here forever. Okay, the last topic I want to touch on is going to be community. And this is important for me because finding community has been difficult, not just because, oh my God, I'm so unique and nobody's like me, <laughs> but because I find it difficult to find community because of my own internal dialogue and I'm sure you know. But this is where YouTube comes in literally what I'm doing right now and what everybody's doing as they participate, whether they're watching or actively making videos with the 12 days of Yule and any other witchy challenge is it breeds community. It allows you to find new channels. It allows you to make new connections. It allows you to see other people being vulnerable and giving you courage to do the same. And that is just so empowering in itself. Apart from, you know, making these wonderful connections with people and finding Maybe this little tiny corner in the internet where you feel that you can actually feel some relief. And I know I definitely felt that on YouTube for the longest time. You know, I kind of wanted my YouTube channel to be like 10 subscribers only because I felt such a relief being able to share my practice and not getting like bombarded with hate or with like that was my fear right like people are going to hate me or people are going to be like you're not a witch or you know all the imposter syndrome bullshit. But community has been growing for me 
All right. Actually, I want to say I've actually been in community because I wasn't before this whole past year. And it has been amazing because I do think that you become a better witch when you're in community. What I like about YouTube is it makes me want to interact more often than I naturally comfortably would. And I like that. I like to be pushed a little bit. That's why I like doing these witchy challenges because it provides that push. It makes me find things out about myself that I wouldn't if I was just comfortably hiding in my room, which I did for a lot of my life. And on the note of community, I do want to shout out the Discord that I'm in, which has been curated by the lovely Starlight the Wild Witch. I just realized I have a lot more to say than I thought that I did, and that's that I cut myself short in a lot of these things. <laughs> Okay, this is the last thing I'm going to talk about. And that is the relationship I have with this, this meat vessel. This past year, I decided to revivify and rededicate myself to my physical vessel, my body, my meat suit. And it has been very transformative. It has changed the way that I feel in my body. It has changed the way that I interact with my body. And I think that a lot of the times us switches tend to be up here a lot. And this is, this is not about um, being able to do certain things physically. It's more about being able to have a back and forth with the vessel. And it's, it's been very this. <laughs> and, you know, I've been a fitness gym girly for maybe 13 or 14 years now. And before that, I was playing soccer. So I've always done movement. It's not something that I'm just starting to do. But throughout all of that, there was still a lot of hate that I used to put towards my vessel and I saw the repercussions of that. Now I feel like I'm on the other end of it <laughs> that many years later. And it's allowed me to not be so stressed out. It's allowed me to feel fluid in my body, even though it's not like I was stiff. But it felt like maybe my body was moving one way, but the vessel, the meat suit was not. Like they weren't in sync. Apart from like some health issues that arose and just general discontentment with the way that I looked like I've done a full 180 and that is something I also want to make a whole entire video on sometime next year because it's an ongoing relationship and I've put in a lot of effort. I've put in money. I've put in resources. I've put in time. I've put in ritual. I've put in whole dedications, workouts. By the way, <laughs> I do have a gym with a witch series. If you want to check it out, I do talk about different ways that I incorporate my witchiness and the fitness side of things. And I'm going to continue that series next year as well. But yeah. Okay, I'm going to stop talking because I will talk forever and a day. I know that there are some things that I'm forgetting, but those are like the main things that I wanted to reflect on when it came to my last year in my practice but thank you for watching <laughs>